Western Canada is being baked under what's known as a heat dome. In BC, the historic heat wave has already been linked to a staggering loss of life. It was the deadliest weather event in Canadian history. 619 people lost their lives. The 2021 heat dome was the worst weather-related mass casualty event in the history of Canada. It happened in June and July of 2021 and was a period of intense heat over six days where 619 people within BC died. I remember seeing more patients than I've ever seen in my entire career with heat-related illness, from heat rash to headaches from dehydration um, to cases of heat stroke. And I remember hearing from colleagues that those were the worst emergency shifts of their entire careers. They were literally running from room to room, intubating patients with being unconscious and having seizures from heat stroke. The entire health system actually collapsed. I remember one patient who told me that she managed her overheating during the day by running into the ocean over and over again. But then when she had to return to her home at night, then that was when she developed heat stroke within 10 to 15 minutes of being home because there was no indoor cooling in her home. So it was basically like a greenhouse where she couldn't escape from the heat. The major risk factors for mortality during the heat dome were a few things. Being elderly, uh, not having access to indoor cooling, being socially isolated, and also not living in proximity to green space, which we know physically cools down and reduces the urban heat island effect. And so things that we could do is make sure that people have access to indoor cooling that's not going to worsen climate change at the same time. So that means electric heat pumps instead of gas heating that can both heat and cool and are more energy efficient. My name's Bob Gilson and I've lived at the Flesher Co-op for more than 10 years. The heat pump is like a refrigerator. Uh, it works the same way. It pumps fluid um, between a compressor outside and a head inside that either produces heat or when it's reversed, it produces cold. We had a member who installed a heat pump and I suggested that that technology might be good for the co-op. The board agreed and a few months later we had two heads installed in the hall. And that summer it was particularly hot and we opened the hall up for use as a cooling centre. And we had a number of seniors that would come down during the heat of the day uh, do their knitting and read and uh, just hang out and not worry about uh, overheating. So the board seeing the interest um, that was in the community uh, decided to start a retrofit of all of the heating systems in the co-op and luckily enough that was the winter of 2020-2021 and the heat dome happened the summer of 2021 and personally I think that it saved lives here. Our units used to get very hot and uh, my bedroom is uh, on an upper floor faces the sun a bit and it would get just unbearably warm. I was very worried for particularly the older members of our co-op who again a lot of them live in again those second floor very hot places and uh, uh, in previous years we had had to make sure that they were doing well we had had to find ways to provide cooling uh, and we just didn't have to do that this year and so we almost felt a little bit of guilt Right, a little bit of that survivor's guilt that because we the timing had worked out, the rebates had come in, we'd been able to put in place these heat pumps, our 100 units and so almost 200 people who live here, they were well taken care of, but we worried more about folks in the community. Now, for uh, uh, much less than the cost of, for example, a window air conditioning unit, we have reliable cooling in those units that makes those hot summers much more bearable. I'm a very strong supporter of heat pumps. And actually, I've been amazed since I had one in. It's even better than I thought. Winters are good. I'm nice and warm when I have to be warm. And uh, during the summer, I'm nice and cool when I have to be cool. And it was such a blessing that we got the project finished before that heat dorm in 2021.
This is a win-win-win-win, right? It's a win for every level of government because there are significant cost savings at the end of the day from having reliable heating and cooling. Uh, uh, not just, again, the cost during freak events like the heat dome, which we know are now uh, are going to become more prevalent, but just the fact that this is a less expensive, more reliable heating and cooling all of the time is just a benefit. So I really encourage governments to think about what can they do to make sure that there is well-structured, easily accessible and long-running funding. I feel really happy about living in a community where um, most of the people here are all concerned about climate change and are willing to do what they can do to do their part to make a difference. We see the impacts of the climate crisis in our practices year after year, whether it's heat illness from extreme heat, whether it's the wildfire smoke blowing in from the worst wildfires that we've ever seen in Canada last year, to flooding that interrupts access to health services. It seems like a never-ending litany of climate effects on our healthcare system and on our patients. Electric heat pumps are an incredibly important part of our response to and also our decreasing of the climate crisis because they're more energy Energy efficient. They also use clean electricity, renewable energy to heat our homes instead of burning natural gas that worsens air pollution within the inside of our homes but also drives the climate crisis by increasing our use of fossil fuels. And also during wildfire smoke events, heat pumps also ha often have filtration systems built in so that they can keep the inside of your home cooler and cleaner at the same time.